With me today is Teresa Gable. She's the PT in charge of most of these programs, right over there. So she's the lady you want to see when you go in. Um, and also, I do have the fact sheets and handouts on each of the programs that I'm going to cover, so you don't have to. If you can take notes if you want to, but there's stuff over there too. So um, the first one we're going to talk about is NAP, Non-Insurance Crop Disaster Assistance. How they get NAP out of that, I don't know. They just did. It's a government acronym. Um, most the deadline for this is March for most crops is March 15th your hay your pasture your millet for forage any of that stuff um, it works pretty much like crop insurance does you get what you pay for for $250 you can insure all of your tame and native hay for another 250 you can insure your pasture so $500 50% of approved yield 55% of price that's the basic coverage whoops back up um, Right now we have 17 crops with 39. I cannot cover chocolate pudding plants, but I do have a mixed forage that will cover the cover crops for full season grazing, so we're, we're good there. Um, additional coverages, not on grazing, but you can buy up, just like you can crop insurance, up to 100% of the price and 65% of the yield. There is a maximum that they figure off of a guarantee. We've never had anybody hit that. We had two producers buy up in 2017. So um, these are some examples of last year. You'll get this summary of coverage every year. It'll show you what you have. It'll show an estimated dollar amount. You will never get $9 an acre on native hay. Never. <laughs> That's 100% loss at 100%. So everybody got all excited that they were gonna get $9 an acre on their nap this year were disappointed. But depending on what your yields are, and these you can prove up, just like you do crop insurance, they set a price just like RMA. Several of the uh, crops that are also insured by RMA, we use RMA's final price. Winter wheat for grazing will go on RMA's winter wheat price. So they're set every year. Um, this happens to be a buy up here. He, he carries, this is an example he carries in three different counties. So his buy up, in addition to his 700 or 1500 that he paid in three counties, which was the 500. He paid another 3300 in premiums this spring. But in buy up alone for just Potter County, he made 22,000 on his grazing and another 20 on less than 200 acres of hay. Years like this, buy up will pay for you, will work for you. Um, this, in this case, he was at a 60% 60 loss, $1.75 an acre on his tame hay, $2.80 on his, or a two, $2 on his tame, $1.75 on his native. Here's another example of just the basic. This producer did not buy up, had a little bit less yield. You'll notice the estimated dollar amount went down. <coughs> but for $500, he got $2,400 on 100 acres of, of uh, hay, he got 30,000 on his tame, uh, tame and native pasture. This example was in the eastern part of the county. They were at an 80% loss. That's why that's higher. But there's quite a bit of difference in the buy-up. Um, but like I said, it works just like crop insurance. The more you pay for it, the more you, the more you get. Mm -hmm. PRF is kind of taking a little bit of a Looking over a lot of the forage policies mm -hmm. and was offered a lot in western South Dakota on rangelands. Correct. Now NAP can be utilized in conjunction with grazing and not with the hay portion of the PRF. Is that accurate? You can, you can insure your hay with both, but you'll have to choose the, the uh, benefit that you get. You can't double dip on it. But say you guess the wrong quadrant or you guess the wrong month on your rainfall index one, you could come in with the nap. I just can't double dip. But right now, PRA and rainfall in are considered pilot programs yet in South Dakota, so you can insure them with nap. We had one, one Teresa this year that had to pick. They brought in their uh, yeah, rainfall on their forage. Otherwise, it was so you're went down. I can pay for both, but I can only collect on one? You can choose which one you collect on, so yes. I get to pay for both. If you choose to, yes. I was, told, I was told by one office that you could, you could use PRF in conjunction with NAP on grazing, but not on the hay portion of it. 
You just have to pick on the hay which benefit you receive. You can insure it both, but you cannot double benefit. To, that's the last we heard anyway. So, because it's until it's no longer considered a pilot. Now is West River, is RMA, uh, do the rainfall and the PRA a pilot yet? Because here it is. So yeah. Yep, it depends on if it's a pilot program or not. You can still insure it both. And like I said, with the rainfall indexes, it's kind of hit and miss if you, because you have to pick your, is it grids and months your and, intervals. yep. Two month intervals. Yep. So if you happen to pick the wrong interval on that and NAP would pay you more, that you just don't. And now we worked with the crop insurance agent on the one that we had and it worked out. His crop insurance was quite a bit more than his NAP because he didn't have buy up on it. So, but, so, yep. And at his crop insurance agent, I mean, they, they know it as well because he knew he had both on it. We just visited back and forth because we, our adjuster went out, so therefore they, their adjuster didn't have to go out. I mean, we, we shared information back and forth. Well, he so. must have had a forage policy then because there's no adjuster in the PRF. Yep, he has a forage policy with us as well. So, but yep, you just can't claim both. Um, the service fee, like I said, is $250. However, if you're a beginning farmer or socially disadvantaged, we waive them all together and your premiums are only 50%. Um, so we have a couple of those. Uh, this, this helps a lot with the newer farmers, the, the guys getting into the cattle and stuff. You can insure your grass for, if you want basic, you can insure it for free. Um, so, and there is just a limited resource form. There's a website on here. Um, you answer yes or no, it gives you some information. And it's updated yearly, because uh, it's based on, this one happens to be 2018, um, or 2017, but they update them every year. You self-certify on it. We don't need to know your income. You just tell us yes or no. Causes of loss. Most of ours come from drought. We have played a few prevent plant on sorghum or millet hay when we've gotten some untimely rains and couldn't get in the end of July. Um, that's about all we've paid. Uh, it's hard to hit on hail because if you insure 2,000 acres of pasture, you're not gonna hit a 50% loss usually with a hail storm. We do have ELAP program that we've covered under hail and that will come later. Um, so, that's that. Owner, operator, landlord, or share crop. Basically, if you are on a 578 in our office, you're eligible for NAP because you have a risk in the crop. We used to have issues with people who rented pasture AUM because the landowner says, I want to buy the NAP policy because I want to control when and how many people are out there. If I'm at risk if I tell them they can't run their cattle at all. But then you run into the, the renter who has, says, you know, my cows were out there four out of the six months. I was at risk for that. But you can't claim LFP because you're not on the 578. So they finally fixed that, and we can load animal unit, monthly, or animal unit rents now. So in this case, and we had one this year, which we kind of panicked over, but apparently it worked out well. We passed our review, National Office Review, last week. So... Um, in the case of it was, he had NAP, the owner owned a NAP, ha, bought the NAP policy. He let them graze five animal units instead of 10 for the whole six months. So in that case, the landowner was, had 50%, he lost 50% of his income, so his NAP covered 50% of it. But the LFP guy was on the 578 and he could actually have 50% of the LFP that he was eligible for works so much better than what we used to, you know, if the guy had nap, then there was under the table, well, you apply for LFP and I'll pay you this much. And so if you are, if you have a landlord that runs these animal units, you are allowed to load those now in our office. That is a big plus, especially for the LFP program. So we don't have a lot of them, but there's, there's a few that we just, we really have. Um, in 2017, for 2016, which wasn't horribly, horribly dry, NAP paid out $34,301. In two, 2017, we paid $420,380 in uh, Potter County. Uh, coverage period pretty much runs the same as crop insurance. 
30 days after you buy the policy, which is usually April 15th for us. Grazing season has changed. In Potter County, it used to run through October 31st. It's October 15th now. And they have lowered our um, animal units, our grazing capacity. It used to be eight acres per animal unit for um, NAP for on native, and now it's seven this year. So, and there are counties around us, pretty much everybody had a change at least on one, if not both, of their carrying capacities. You must report crop acreage by November 15th for grasses. You must report your harvested production. Failure to report, we give you a zero. And let me tell you, zero yields on a 10-year APH, Teresa can tell you, they hurt for a long time. Um, you can report it anyway, from simple piece of paper to bring me in your notebook out of your pocket from the bail count to automated Excel sheets on the, spread, on the website. A lot of guys just, if they insure their grain or their uh, alfalfa, and they have to report to RMA, they just add the legal descriptions of what they've got for NAP on that same uh, multi parallel crop insurance reporting. <coughs> Give us a copy of it all. We don't care. If we don't want alfalfa, we won't use it. That way all your hay is in one place. But you have to report. This is an APH, just like crop insurance. If, like last year, we have a disaster, we don't make you take the zero that you may have gotten. They use a replacement yield, which is 65% of T. T yield for NAP changes every year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Teresa. We were at 197 last year and we're 181 this year. Yeah. Yep. So, but it's very, very important to report your yields. Um, notice of loss. You have to file a notice of loss with us. I will tell you this year, May, they were in. They were just like, I'm going to certify I have a loss already. <laughs> like, we'll take them. We can't pay grazing until after the grazing season, but I mean, we all knew. Um, 15 calendar days if it's a prevent plant, or if you have a cover crop that maybe gets a, a hail or something like that, it'll be 15 days after you first notice it. If you're going to hay a field, or you tell us you intend to hay, and you end up grazing it, Come in and tell us. Panel out a piece. <clears throat> Otherwise, you're going to get zero production. And I know when we used to report by July 15th, you didn't know whether you were going to hay or graze. Now that you have to report at November 15th, nobody knows. But let us know. If, and it's all right if you change it. It's just that you have to let us know that you're changing it. And we can do something about it. So um, grazing losses. These are always interesting in the fact that our handbook is less than friendly when it comes to pasture losses. But if you carry a hay policy and you have a 50% loss on your hay, we'll give you a 50% loss on your pasture. Figure it's the same type grass, same type management, pretty good to go. If you don't carry a policy and we've got a neighbor who maybe is a couple miles away from you, we can assign a similar yield through our county committee. Don't have a lot of NAP policies if neither of those are the case, we need independent assessments. We've divided the county into three areas. Each one of these areas has grazing cages that are monitored by NRCS established. Um, last year, the western part had a 60% loss, center a 70, eastern half was an 80% loss. Um, this was the first year with our grazing cages, so it was kind of a learning curve. Um, I think they'll be good uh, as we get it underneath us in the belt. Fall County has used them for 16 years. They have years worth of data on different rain sites, range sites. And so I think once we get it working, we'll get it, we'll get it going. Um, one grazing cage is right here on my sister's land at South Whitlock. We've got one just outside of town here in the middle. Uh, we've got one up by Tolstoy and one way down here in the Sahara Desert on, in three. So we kind of evened out. Three is, there wasn't really any way to divide this county that was <laughs> halfway decent. Um, Dewey County, they divided theirs into four acres. They averaged anywhere from 80 to 90%. Walworth, they just used this countywide. They had a 60% loss last year. Edmonds uses countywide. They were at 68. Falk is countywide at 75%. 
High divided north and south, they were 83 and 89. Sully County divided theirs into six different areas and they varied between 80 and 85 percent. So, um, I think once we get, like I said, once we get this going, we'll be better for our independent assessments. Um, those are done by either SDSU or NRCS grazing specialists. Um, we can't use our loss adjusters, we can't use crop insurance. So, um, these are an example of the 100 and, or the 17 crops we have. This, the table had not been updated when it was going to print screens. Our grazing days are 178 now, but there's the seven and the five. So, um, Doug talked about rye, planting rye. Rye for forage can be insured under NAP. However, you had to buy the policy in September. <laughs> it's the one, when are we for forage? You can buy March 15th. We're attempting to, I know, the same thing. Um, trying to get that changed. Whether or not we can, that's a whole other story. But if it is something that you think you might do, come see us this fall before you plant it or as soon as you finish planting it. And uh, we can get that insured as well. Um, here's the chocolate pudding crops. Oats and peas, small grains, sorghum. Uh, we've got legumes and small grains. Pretty much anything you can think of, we can find a place to put it. Um, we are still working on adding a vegetable, mixed forage with vegetable. They haven't told us no yet. We've been trying since last January. They just haven't told us yes. So if we get that added, that'll be one more. Um, Trichocale wheat, um, premium calculator. Right now you still need EOTH, and I don't know how many of you have access. Uh, if you do the FSA Farms Plus, you have that. If not, come in, sit down with your county office. I know Danny and I ran how many scenarios last year, Dan, with X amount of acres of this, X amount. It takes two seconds to plug something in to make to see what your buy-up costs and see what you think you want to have it for. Um, also, the fact sheets, the crop, the production ledger, and the loss adjuster's handbook, if anybody wants to read 400 pages of that. Um, trouble with weather is it's too, right too often for us to know and wrong too often, which by the way, that was a 30% chance of snow that we hadn't got this morning, so. Kind of rain, if you get 30%, we're not, we're gonna, get 10%, we'll get rain here. 100%, we're not gonna get a drop. Uh, any questions on nap before I hit livestock forage? And like I said, come in, see us, sit down with us. We'll plug crops in, acres in, what it might cost you, what your premium might be, what the buy-ups might be. I mean, that's what we're here for, so. Livestock Forage Disaster Program, LFP. Yikes. If we don't get any more rain or we don't get spring, we're gonna be doing this again. Again, the grazing period, LFP only kicks in for a qualifying drought. Qualifying drought is D2 for eight weeks, D3 anytime, D3 for four, and D4. Thankfully, we never hit D4 last year, but we did hit four monthly payments. We were in D2 long enough, and then we hit D3 to qualify for the four monthly payments. Um, right now, the last thing we checked, we were in D1, I think, for drought monitor. Um, if you, you can access this, it comes out every Thursday. Also, this page lets you submit a report as an individual saying, I don't know where you get your numbers, but we haven't had rain for six weeks. So, um, and they are very helpful with that. They take them, they, they answered right back. Um, I think it helps sometimes, the more impact reports you put in. Uh, I can do them as, as an office manager. I can only do them once. Um, but you guys can do them all yourself. I, I think local impact affects it more than, the February meeting we had here last year, didn't she say that 55% uh, of the drought monitors stuff comes from the, the impacts that they get from their customers, from individual producers replying them? So it, it, if you, honestly, this is the best thing you can do to help yourself because a lot of our programs are driven by this drought monitor. Livestock include beef, cattle, buffalo, goats, sheep, swine, pretty much anything you would have been grazing. 
um, not the deer that are out there that you're not paying for. If you raise deer for a living, you can, but not, not the one that you're feeding for the state for free. Um, must have owned them 60 prior days prior to the beginning of the drought. In our case this year, we hit D3 on June 20th. So anything you owned as of April 20th, we could count whether you had sold them or not. We can count mitigated. If we hit this year again, anything you sold in 17 be, can be counted again as previous years mitigated. They'll be paid at an 80% level though instead of the 100% that they were this year. So do keep track. Don't think, well, just because I sold my cows, I'm not eligible for this program. As long as you've got grazing, you're good. You have to own or lease livestock during those days and provide the grazing. You have to, again, be on the 578. The only, the only scenario that this program doesn't cover well is share cattle. Jason owns the cattle. I own the land. You have no grazing because you're not on my 578 because you're not really AUM. We have landlords that figure it out how much they got per head and, and then pay their share cattle guys, but it doesn't, there's just no way to account for that scenario in this program, unfortunately. So if you actually lease them, you know, you're taking them in so many dollars, so much a dollar a head per day or something like that, then yes, that works. But a lot of them are, I give you 40% of the calves. If you write it up to me and tell me you have a lease, yes. Because I need, if you are not on a 578, I need a written lease and it has to go to committee to prove it. Um, we used to be able to do those form 855s that just said, yeah, I run them, it's fine. This year, Washington has said, absolutely not. If you're not on the 578, it's gonna take me two pages of explanation to say you might be. So they're making, they're tightening it up a little bit. Again, those were the payment rates for last year, 60% of the feed cost. I like this one. <laughs> okay, anything on LFP? I know that was quick, but like I said, we have the handouts if you want to come up and talk to us. Um, last year, Potter County paid $1,183 out for LFP. Livestock indemnity. This one covers weather-related deaths, and they have to be an eligible weather-related, above normal mortality. I know uh, February 1st, sometimes that's the start date for heifer calving. We had some nasty cold weather, and this last weekend wasn't very nice either. Keep track. If you lose a calf, if you've got two on the ground and you lose one, you're at a 50% mortality. That weather event counts, we pay you for the calf. The mo you know, it's not gonna be a lot, but it's gonna be something. And all you have to do is email us, text us, call the office, say, hey, I lost a calf today, got a cold, couldn't find him, snow landed in the snowbank. Um, call us. And then we'll worry about getting your calving records when you're done. You know, you don't have to bring in your calving book every week or every two days. Just tell us when you lost them. <coughs> you had to have owned them, again, 60 days. Um, this one, they have to be maintained for commercial use. Now they're saying, we're not going to pay for your roping horses or your barrel horses. I know everybody out here, your barrel horses, you're running them checking cows. You're roping horses, you're using them. I have no heartburn. You're claiming them on your Schedule F, they're animals. I, that's my personal opinion. If you go to another county office, you're on your own, but that's, like I said, Danny told, I grew up here. In the days before you had four wheeler, I wouldn't ride a four wheeler on the river break anyway. I, we took horses. That was the only way you could check your cows in the pasture. Oh. And everybody rode it on the rode it on the weekend. So, um, basically, the weather event isn't that it lasted all winter. It is a blizzard. It is heat indexy. It is the wind chill. The ice storm we had last year at Christmas. Uh, those horrible, horrible cold temps we had between Christmas and New Year's this year. Um, a disease. Now we have paid anthrax and this. Uh, Cyanobacteria. This one require these two require that the vet tell me 
That's what the cause of death was. Um, and the one year we paid anthrax, and the last year when we paid the other one, it was because it was so dry. The spores came up, the grass wasn't there to protect them, um, all the dams got dropped. So if the vet tells you that's what it is, it is, and those are eligible. There's the normal mortality uh, calves. 95% is considered regular, what your calves should be, so a 5% loss, 2% on your heavier calves. Uh, one and a half on cows and bulls. Sheep, 4%. These will be the ones that look the healthiest. Next, standing next to the ones that look they can't walk or across the yard. I, we grew up, we raised sheep, cattle, horses, pretty much anything you can uh, name. Dad had his hand in. And I will tell you that God was not kind when he compared us to sheep. But they paid my way through college, so. <laughs> um, in 2016, we paid out uh, $10,400 in LIP, and for 2017, we paid $19,900. Um, we do have some 2018 applications because of that cold weather that we hit. Um, if you, and I think I have this back here, uh, if you have a weather event, and we try to document at, this office, at the office, we keep three or four different calendars, we've got the weather underground, I think there's one out at the airport, Danny, they moved that from uh, PCI out to the airport, didn't they? That weather station, SDSU's weather station. So we can monitor it fairly well. Um, obviously, winter storm, blizzards, fired, cold. But say you had a calf born today. It's cold, it's windy, it's crappy. Um, but you doctor it up, you give it some shots, walks around, you think it's going to make it. 30 days later, it's dead in the yard. It's still a weather event. You can tie it back to it was born during the cold. Your calving books support that. So. You do have 30 days to, to tell us that it died. So, um, and like I said, just report them as it happens. Call us, text us, email us. We don't care. You don't have to come in and sign the form to report the loss. We just keep a running tally. One year we went a whole year and had one event in December, but we kept all the running tallies. Last year, I think Amy had eight different events, weather events, lightning. We had heat, we had cold, we had everything. Um, documentation. You can take pictures if you want. I don't really have to see them. If you get pulled for a spot check, you'll want them. We'll take them, that's fine. Um, vet records, you know, hey, I AI'd my cows. I preg tested my cows last fall. Here's the vets, I had 120 head. Tax records, if you're depreciating them out. Pretty much anything as long as we can verify beginning and ending. Um, say your neighbor came by and helped you bury 17 calves. He can write on the form, I saw him, she had 17 dead cows. Uh, pretty much anything will work for here. Now, again, that is up to your county committee, what they're gonna ask you for records. My county committee, every single one of them has livestock. They know what it's like. I have never, we've never had a, a a record turned down uh, again, and we passed. Like I said, we were out. For, we were picked for national review because of the amount of dollar amounts that we went through in these programs. She said we had some of the best records she's seen in this in the nation. So, calving books, things. How do you make a million farming? Start with two and work real hard. <laughs> Next program is ELAP, and this is a different sort, but. It's up for review, up for changes in the 2018 Farm Bill, and whether or not it makes it through, or the 19 Farm Bill, um, that they're trying to remove this $20 million cap. Right now, LFP and, and LIP, it's subject to a certain 60% nationwide factor. Everybody gets the same 60% cut, you're good. This is the only one who waits until the end, throws every application in the pot, and then divides it back out. Any Thing, April will probably pay Teresa on the ones we have rather than right away. And so they're trying to get that changed so it happens within the same at least calendar year um, of what happened. Um, basically, this program covers anything the other two don't. Um, it will cover your grazing losses due to hail, which NAP does not and LFP does not. The nice thing about this one for hail is it's field level. 
So if I have one pasture here along here at the river and it hits a, Janu a July storm, I can claim ELAP on that because it doesn't affect, I don't have to compare it to all my other grasses, all my other units. So that helps. It, it's not going to pay a lot, but it is there. We did have um, eight or nine applications for hauling water this year. Again, not a lot, but same, same thing. You have to own them, you have to be commercially, and you have to be on a 578. So it's based on a, a dollar. That says 2016, but that's actually 18. I can't type. Um, grazing days, again, are back down to 168. There's the hauling the water. Not going to be... Not going to be a lot, but it's going to pay for a little bit of your gas. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me. I've got cards. It's hard to see. My, na my email is mary.schmidt. My name is, it's Mary Kay. Um, when I was two, my mother said I walked out in the living room and told everybody that I didn't like the name Mary and I was going to be called Kay. So anybody that deals with me in the office and you think I'm bad now, I started early. <laughs> um, sign up for our texts. Um, other programs are available. The one I do like is this uh, uh, CropScape from NAS. This is a picture of uh, 160 acres that we own just uh, west of here. This was planted to spring wheat. And so, I mean, you can just pull up your own legal description and, and it just, it's nice. I do know that when you switch lands, if you switch landowners, we are not allowed to tell you what was planted on that for crop insurance purposes, but NAS gives you free access to what may or may not have been planted in previous years. So just a little tidbit. <laughs> I like this one because I, like I said, I raise sheep. So, um, Anything else uh, as far as questions or anything? I do know... Um, some of this stuff seems, and like Doug says, the crazy people stand up here and talk about it. But, so don't jump both feet in. Maybe just take 40 acres or take half your herd and wean them late. Just, just take a little bit of a risk. Um, there was a quote I found when I was going through this. It says, you can't steal second base if both your feet are on first. Start small. You don't have to, you don't have to dive in, but eventually you'll like it. Right, Doug? <laughs> so. But um, we're here anytime, anytime you need us. 8 to 4, we're at the office, 8 to 4.30. If we can't answer it, we'll find somebody who can. <laughs>